Right, it's the day after pulling out those potatoes um, and I watered this bed at lunchtime because it's really dry and I'm going to see if I can create some kind of... No, I can't. I was hoping to create some kind of ridges on the surface with the rake. Some little channels maybe, you know, to bury seed in. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Just by putting these little furrows in like this when I rake the ground back over the seed is going to hopefully fall into those little furrows if I scatter the seed on the surface it's just most of it is going to lay on the surface so I can create a few little drills like that with the rake as I rake it over you know the seed I think should fall into those little drills I'll just use the back of the rake and scratch the seed back in, back down. I'll show you in a minute anyway. God, there's so many stones in this soil from that damn compost I got from that farm. They don't all have to be parallel as, as long as there's furrows in the soil. You can probably get a better view of how crooked these are from where you are than I can. I want to get this done tonight, well this evening, because there's rain forecast uh, for the next day or two, you know, good old British summer's here now, it's just going to rain forever, so it's a good time to get this seed sown, and it can get up and get growing. I dare say I possibly could have done this with a, a wide stick or something, but Oh, it's raining now. Wonderful. Right, there's the seed, guys. Can you see it? All my mixed seed are in there. I don't, I don't quite know how many seed are in this. I'm going to try and apply it at about a gram a square metre. It's going to be pretty impossible. But I'll put a list on the screen now of all the seeds that are in this. And I'm just going to kind of broadcast it like that. And that is it. You can see this this packet of seed is going to do an awful lot of the allotment. And that is it guys. Keep me seed dry. I just pull the back of the rake, pull it over, just try and bury them a little bit. say pull them or push them into those drills it's getting below the surface even mice are probably gonna have a field day on these little peas I shouldn't really have put the cow peas in with this mixture I never it never really occurred to me but uh, I should have just put the cow peas in separate afterwards so I should have sowed all the smaller seed first, mixed it all up in the tray and then just get the cow peas and then just throw them over the top separately. Uh, I could have got a better mixture that way because when you put all these seeds in a tub, the smaller seeds, as you mix it up, they all tend to sink to the bottom of the tray and you end up with all the big seeds at the surface. So yeah, the bigger seeds, Keep them separate if you can. Don't do like I do. And then just throw them on second. Right, there we are. I can see a few cow peas on the surface. Here, there and everywhere. I'm going to put a net over them. And even though it's forecast rain, you can see how dry that is. I am going to get, just get the watering can and I'm just going to dump some water on here. I think this net may be long enough. Keep the critters off, whatever they may be. Certainly stop the birds from scratching holes all over it. Although they didn't last night. But you know, as soon as you put seeds in they will. That's that sod's law in action. 
I'm just standing on them cowpeas, <laughs> kind of push them into the ground a bit. Certainly does no harm walking on your soil, it firms it. It's no dig, so you can do. It's not all soft and fluffy where if you're digging it, you're just going to bury up to your ankles if you're digging it over. And what you'll end up doing then in that case is you'll end up pushing those seed way deeper so you'll get varying germination rates but this soil is firm so there's no worries just walk on it and just push these little peas in a little bit it'll just help germination a bit yes it might keep something off anyway there's rats about at the minute and I cannot believe the rate of growth on my corn cobs I think there'll be corn cobs ready this week towards this weekend I think we'll actually be getting corn and uh, the rats know this because um, there was a rat visited last night visited the allotment unfortunately for the rat it made its way out of the allotment via the fen trap station at the back down the side of the shed so Mr Rat found the fen trap last night and that's the end of Mr Rat but no doubt they're in they're sniffing around and they're rooting about around the corn that's where the fen trap is right let me get some water on this because uh, I've got another bed as well that I'm going to sow well I'm sorry but for some reason the mics turned themselves off on this few segments after this but um, anyway I've just cleared these two beds to get the green manure in and I'm taking these last two cabbages out. Now the interesting thing here is one of these cabbages had club root and that's the one I'm twisting out now. Because I pull the root out I'm just going to show you now the club root on the actual root. There it is, that big bulbous section is the actual club root. But this cabbage still put a massive amount of feeder roots out. It was difficult to get out the ground. And it's actually produced a bigger cabbage than the cabbage that didn't have club root. It's really surprised me this, how these brassicas can get club root and yet still be healthy and grow. So yeah, that's, there's the one on the left. Club root, beautiful cabbage. Right, so this other bed, this had the purple broccoli in. I'd left, actually left a green random broccoli that came out with the purples just to save some seed. And that uh, forget-me-not stuff, the, the flowers, I just leave them in. They just came up on the edge of the beds, in the paths really. So I left them in. Just a flower because they're pretty and it's something growing, isn't it? Um, so just yeah just rake these beds over now and I'm just going to get the green manure sowed in this bed just like I did with the other bed. I'm using a stick this time to cut these little furrows in or these little drills. It's easier than the rake and I can get them closer together with this stick actually. And then I can just get the seed sown in here. And there we are. So I've, got, I've now got one, two, three beds with green manure on that side and the bed I've just done here with the green manure the first bed and there's my Eskimo carrots looking really happy there under that net this is the trial sowing of this green manure bed and you, you can see the buckwheat is very very dominant in this bed so yeah the quinoa is really really thick I was going to thin this out so I was going to um you know pull some of it out but it's kind of sorting itself out in a way because the stronger plants are getting ahead where down below you've got all these little weaker plants that are just not going to make it so rather than thin I'm just going to leave it to it the only ones I'm going to thin are these buckwheat here because whatever was growing underneath this buckwheat when I sowed the video, I actually said a few buckwheat seeds had, had managed to get into this. Uh, and I cannot remember what it was, this one. So where, where we've got this one, I'm just going to take this buckwheat out. Just to give that a chance, because the, the buckwheat is absolutely going to paralyse it. 
Um, the cowpeas are here. They're not as fast growing as I thought they might be, but they are coming up. Now, why am I growing this huge variety of seed together in one bed? And this is just a token because in the beds I've just sold, like you've just seen, I've got upwards of 15, 16 varieties of seed growing in them. It's all about the microbe diversity in the soil. So each one of these plants partners with a different microbe in the soil. And when, what we want for growing vegetables is a huge diversity of microbes and fungi in the soil. And those microbes and fungi, they directly benefit each other as the plants grow and it really brings the soil to life. So every, every microbe is helping every other microbe out in some unique way which also then helps the plant that that particular microbe is partnered with. I am going to do one trial bed and I think it's going to be the, uh, the when the jazzy potatoes come out, which I might do today. I'll video that for you to see what sort of crop we've got from these slightly frost damaged jazzies. I am going to trial sow a full bed of buckwheat because it is believed to help really help knock back wireworms it kills some of them it stunts the growth because there's a compound in the roots of buckwheat that when the wireworms eat, eat the roots it does something to them it really messes them up so there yeah i'm going to do the jazzy as a trial bed of just pure purely sown buckwheat nothing else and we'll just see you know what happens in that bed incidentally this is two or three days since i actually filmed that and all of this seed has germinated under these nets it's doing really well so with a chance for some decent growth and i will put how many days this has been in the ground up here somewhere um, and you can see from the growth it's it's above a foot tall now the buckwheat so it's pretty rapidly pretty rapid growing and it's going to grow well this into august and september so you can just imagine what sort of height this stuff is going to get to touch wood anyway that's it for this one guys i'm going to come back i'm going to start i've started harvesting potatoes and I'm going to harvest the jazzies and I'll bring you back and just see what sort of yields we'll get. The second earlies aren't going to be so good, but I think the main crops, some of the main crops are going to be absolutely fantastic. Right, catch you in the next one, guys. I've just got to get all these fellas cut out of here. I'm even leaving the roots in.